Welcome back, everyone. Well, about a year ago, I did a four-part series taking a look at photographs. Photographs that had some historic connection that showed people meeting that we never thought met in real life, uh, that showed ordinary people in an extraordinary circumstance, uh, or photos that we just didn't know existed and give us insight into historic events. So I thought we would continue that. It seemed to be a pretty popular series. So we're going to take a look at some more today. If you haven't seen the ones that I've done previously, I'll put a link down in the description as well as the playlist up at the end on the end screen so that you can go back and watch those first four episodes. We looked at something like 100 photographs in those first four episodes, and we're going to look at a bunch more today. But before we dive into today's episode, episode, I do want to let you know that we have actually partnered with MyHeritage for today's video. I believe one of the best ways to learn about history is by researching your own family history. Whether you're an experienced genealogist like myself or just getting started, MyHeritage is the perfect place to do that. They've made it easy to get started by offering a 14-day trial, and if you decide to keep your subscription after that, you'll get 50% off. I started my family tree by manually entering the information I had about my parents and grandparents. From there, the research can begin. With 90 million users and more than 19 billion records available, MyHeritage provides discovery matches that will help you to build your own tree. With so many resources available in one place, it won't take long before your tree looks like mine. Since we're talking about historic photos today, one of my favorite things to do on the site is to add old photos from my family, attach them to the people in my tree, and then use my heritage's tools to repair, enhance, colorize, and even animate the photos. It really gives new life to those incredible people that I'm learning so much about. Speaking of discoveries I've made on my heritage, one of my favorite has to be this newspaper article I discovered from 1913 through the newspaper records that shows five generations of my family, including my third and fourth great grandmothers with their children, grandchildren and a great grandchild. Really cool stuff. If you're ready to make discoveries like I have, sign up today for your free 14 day trial by using the link in the description or the pinned comment below. If I were to ask you, what do you think is going on in this photograph? Some of you might be able to guess it. This is a photo that was taken in 1957. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because you see a couple of things going on here. You got a young girl here covering her ears, seemingly to protect herself from the screams of this girl here who's wearing binoculars. Uh, and then you got an older woman behind her who also seems to be really getting into it and screaming too. And you notice that a good bit of the crowd is women. There are a few guys. And the guys who are there are wearing suits and ties. This is at an Elvis Presley concert in 1957. So I guess it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. Now this one doesn't look like anything special, but this is actually one of the most important photographs ever taken in history. This photo was taken in 1861, the same year the American Civil War began. Uh, and it was taken of a ribbon, uh, sometimes called a tartan ribbon. Uh, and you can see it's kind of crude and not real clear, but this is the first color photograph ever taken. In the mid-1850s, the process was discovered that you could basically break down all colors into some combination of other colors. And so that led to the ability to use filters to take photographs. And I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a photo photograph expert. Uh, but that process led to the ability to take color photographs for the first time. We kind of take for granted, you know, because most of our family photographs, even going back to like the 1950s, are all in black and white. But by the time those 1950s photographs that were taken in black and white were taken, color photography had been around for almost a century. Now, it underwent a lot of processes and a lot of refinement over the years, but we actually have some really early color photographs in existence. I want to show you a few of those. Here's one taken in 1908. This is not a colorized photograph. This photo was taken in color. These are all the ones, next ones I'm going to show you, these are not colorized at all. This is Mark Twain in 1908, 
color photograph. Uh, another really cool one here is a Newport 23. Uh, this is a World War I airplane, again, taken in color during the First World War. This is a French soldier in a trench during the First World War, again, taken in color. What's cool about this one is uh, this thing to here, this kind of metal plate that he's standing behind and observing, we saw some of those in Verdun laying around on the battlefield that had been left out there for the last hundred years. So looked just like that, all rusted, of course. Uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. And then uh, this one here, this is actually the very first digital photograph ever taken and it was taken by the guy who was taking the photograph it's an image of his son and digital photography was incredibly important because it allowed us then to send images digitally through the atmosphere uh, so that when we sent spacecraft to places like mars we were able to send digital photographs back uh, so this was developed in the 1960s and the 1970s I love this picture because there's so much that we can relate to the modern times as a parent with uh, two teenagers and an 11-year-old who are often glued to their screens. This is from 1948, and this is this young man's first time seeing a television. Look at his face, and you can kind of see the reflection of it there in the window. Just This just speaks so much about the future. Uh, this is now a picture that's what nearly 80 years ago i mean just fascinating stuff this is in the aftermath of the second world war uh just wow this one here is from the first world war and it is a, a woman who is working for the red cross who were very active during the first world war uh, writing down the dying words of a mortally wounded soldier I don't know the context. I don't know what country this young man uh, is fighting for or anything else about the photograph except it was taken in 1917, and I think it speaks for itself. This one's really cool. If you've ever seen the intro to a film by MGM Studios, you know that they have the lion, and if you see older movies of theirs, you can see that it's an actual real lion. And this is actually a photograph that was taken when they filmed the lion for the original MGM intro. Uh, really cool. I don't know where and when it was taken, but I know that's what it's depicting. This one here is intense and it makes my mind hurt a little bit, but I know that this is absolutely the way this was with coal mine, miners in my own family. Uh, this was taken in the 1920s in Belgium. And it depicts coal miners coming up on an elevator back to the surface after a day at work down in the mines. And just look at how they're stuffed all together and how crouched they are. Uh, my wife's grandfather worked in a coal mine when he was a teenager. His father before him was a coal miner that came from Hungary. And he would tell us about how they basically were laying on their backs working in a mine. And it was like just a really short, like, I don't know, maybe two, three feet uh, it was the height of the ground in which they were working. And I just, oh, uh, the, the guts it took to do work like this, knowing how dangerous it was, how claustrophobic it was. And most families, especially if you have families that came from Eastern Europe or if you have families who lived in places like Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, good chance you had relatives who worked in one of these mines. It was intense stuff. I thought this one was pretty interesting. It's it's not the clearest photograph, but this was taken in the 1960s. Young, handsome-looking guy, I think. He was a good-looking dude. Uh, that is uh, a few years before Joe Biden was elected to the United States Senate. Uh, he's one of the youngest senators in U.S. history. Uh, he was actually elected, I think he was still 29 when he was elected to the Senate. Took office at 30, uh, which you have to be 30 to be a senator. Um Good-looking young dude there in the 60s, I think. Uh, and speaking of Joe Biden, this is another one that I think is actually pretty fascinating. I always thought this was a really cool photograph. This was taken in the White House uh, in the Oval Office. Uh, and this is a then-Senator Joe Biden meeting with then-President Jimmy Carter. 
Uh, kind of cool that Jimmy Carter's still alive. He's in very frail health, obviously, and just lost his wife. He's 99 years old now. Was a young president himself at the time. I think he's in his early 50s. Uh, so two young guys with uh, a lot of life ahead of them still back in the 70s. About the time I was born, this photo was taken. Pretty cool. Now, speaking of before they became famous photographs, I love this one. This is in the 1950s. This is a young uh, Air Force uh, radar repair technician who served four years in the Air Force. And I'm curious to know if you've seen the photo or if you recognize the man. I guarantee you would recognize his voice if you heard it. Uh, that is a young Morgan Freeman. Uh, just a kid from the South who said that he uh, developed a love for the air and for flying uh, because of the movies that he would watch. And after he spent four years and was honorably discharged from the Air Force, he went out to California and became an actor. Uh, probably one of the most beloved and one of the most popular actors uh, of the last 30 years. Morgan Freeman. This one was taken in 1940, and it depicts a British couple, or at least a British bride. I don't know that that's her husband. It could be. Uh, it could be her father or something, too. He's wearing some medals. Uh, but this was actually taken outside of her home on the day of her wedding, which you can see has suffered a great deal of destruction from the blitz, from the bombing that has been going on in the UK during World War II. You can see the windows are all blown out. There's rubble all over the front. But keep calm and carry on. That was the British uh, saying, right? Uh, life goes on. Marriages go on, even in the midst of destruction. Pretty cool stuff. Some of you have maybe seen this one before, but it's an iconic photograph that speaks volumes. These are... Uh, people who have just been liberated from a train that presumably was taking them to either an extermination or a work camp uh, in the Nazi regime during the Second World War. Thankfully for these folks, including what appears to be all women and children in this case, uh, they didn't get that far. But you can just see the look of relief, the uh, the smiles, the thanks that they have, and multiply that times thousands for all the camps where people were liberated and hopefully survived. I thought this one was really interesting. This is a photograph of 12 female Russian snipers from the Eastern Front in World War II who are uh, combined 775 kills between the 12 of them. Just let that sink in. These 12 ladies killed 775 Germans. This is a before and after photograph of an ancient Greek stadium that was uh, excavated in modern-day Turkey. Uh, it shows you what it looked like just natural. You know, I mean layers get piled up on things over time and you have growth of grass and dirt and trees even and when you uncovered all of that look at what you're left with and there's another photo very similar to that that is pretty fascinating this one here was taken in 1892 on the top and then you see what it looks like today that is chichen itza uh, and again, you could only see the very top of it sticking out, and it had been that way for centuries until uh, archaeologists, people doing restoration work, uncovered it and helped us to see it in its former glory. This one's pretty cool. This is from 1921. It was taken in London. And uh, among others in this photograph, right here, you see a young Prince Hirohito one day would become Emperor Hirohito of Japan. And uh, I didn't see a label of the other people in the photograph. It just said that it was Prince Hirohito in Japan, but I see at least two other people that I recognize. Uh, over here on the right, and it's kind of a blurry picture, over here on the right is uh, the Prince of Wales at that time, uh, who in 1936 would become King Edward VIII uh, before he abdicated that year later on. And then his brother, who at this time was the Duke of York, over here, Prince Albert, who would one day be King George VI and is the grandfather of the current King Charles III. Okay, we're going to wrap up this episode with this one. This one was way too cool not to share. 
Uh, this is a young Elvis Presley giving a young Johnny Cash a haircut when they were on tour together. You can see Elvis still kind of got that country look going on. But these guys did tour together. And at one point, uh, somebody else who kind of crossed paths with them was uh, Buddy Holly, who as a teenager actually opened for Elvis Presley when he came through Lubbock, Texas. Uh, so it's kind of really cool to see how the, the early pioneers of music, of rock music, and um, so much of what we know today, how they cross paths. And in this case... Helped each other out to look a little better. So I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, if you have other ideas uh, of photos that you think I should show, let me know, describe them, and I can look them up myself or give me a link to a special photograph, uh, and I'll have to approve that link. I'll also do some more episodes looking at famous videos when we get a chance. So if you have recommendations for that as well, let me know. Please hit that like button, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.